Hey everyone, so my GeoLayers Battle Maps course is coming out in just a few weeks here. If it's already out, I'm, I have a link for it down in the video description. If it's not out yet, I have a link to sign up to a newsletter so you can get updates and find out about discounts for the pre-sale. This particular video is a lesson from that course. I wanted to share that with you today to give you a little taste. And it's all about how to rasterize your vectors inside of Adobe After Effects. And the reason I want to touch on this is because this is a pretty big deal when you're working in a GeoLayers project, because GeoLayers will draw out map features as vector shapes. So in After Effects, you have two main layer types. You can have a solid layer or you can have a shape layer. A shape layer is a vector shape, meaning it uses paths and vertices to create these shapes. And solids are essentially rasters, meaning that they use pixels. So now why would you want to use raster solid layers instead of vector shape layers? Well, there are a couple of different reasons. The main reason is the fact that it's just easier on your system. Also, there are a lot of effects in Adobe After Effects that are designed to work on solid layers. If you try to use them on shape layers, you can get some really funky results. Okay, I'm going to quickly show you three different ways to essentially rasterize your vector shapes. All right, I've got a GeoLayers project set up here. And first things first, I actually need to have a shape layer to use as an example here. So I'm going to search for Canada up here, and I'm going to grab this map feature. And the reason I want to use Canada is because they have a really detailed coastline here. There's going to be a lot of vertices, and this is going to be pretty complex to draw out. It's going to be intensive on our system. So with this selected, I need to select a layer style. I just want to do solid white. And right here, this is where you can actually control the simplification of your vector shape. So you can actually, you know, lower the number of vertices. There's three different modes here. You have no simplification, you have current zoom simplification, and you have max zoom. So max zoom, if you have an animation, you know, crank in here, you have a lot of keyframes and it's zooming in and zooming out, it will simplify it based on the maximum zoom level of your entire animation. Current zoom will just do it from your current zoom and then no simplification. So if I try to draw this out right now, it's going to give me a warning saying, whoa, whoa, no simplification, over 68,000 vertices, this is a lot, it's going to take a while to draw out, and it's going to slow down After Effects quite a lot. So it gives me the suggestion to simplify this, but I'm not, because I want to show you um, how this works with no simplification. Now I'm going to zoom in here and just show you how bad this algorithm is. So with this shape here, we actually have a straight line, and you can see the number of vertices here. With a straight line, you only need two vertices to draw this out. So this isn't very efficient, and this is one of the reasons it slows down my system. And you can see right now how laggy this is. So what can I do? Well, I can simply draw out another shape, simplify it based on current zoom, and draw this out. And this will indeed draw this out a little bit faster. You can see how much faster that was. I actually didn't get the warning. And now you can see there are no extra vertices right here. It's actually being smart and using this as a straight line. It sees that it's a line and doesn't waste uh, unnecessary vertices on this. Okay, so if this simplification isn't doing what we need, or we want to use an effect that works only on solid layers and not shape layers, this is where we would want to look at different ways to rasterize this. And I'm going to show you three ways in particular here. So first off, I'm going to grab our detailed shape layer here, and I'm going to duplicate this. Now the first and easiest way is to just do a simple pre-comp. So since we're working in a GeoLayers project, I need to turn off the parent here, because it's parented to this map comp anchor. And if I pre-compose it, it's going to throw it you know, out of position here. So first, I will just select none for the parent and link of this one. And well, I'm going to turn off the visibility of the other. And now with it selected, I'm going to go to Layer, Pre-Compose. And I'll call it Canada Pre-Comp. Click OK, and now voila, we have a raster here. So now I actually need to reconnect this and turn 3D on again immediately. You need to do that step right after, because if you move your map at all, it's going to be out of sync. So now I'll be able to use certain effects like turbulent displace or fractal noise on this. And if I do map zooms, it'll be fine. I can do rough and edges, as well as a bunch of other effects that just are a little wonky on shape layers. But we do have the caveat of if we zoom too far in, our edges are going to be a little bit blurred. And this is because this is now pixels, and it's going to look a little pixelized. So this is the pre-comp rasterized, and here is the original. So you can see how sharp these edges are. So just be aware of that. Now another way to quickly rasterize this is to use a script inside of the GeoLayers panel. So if I grab this shape layer again, I can click on the Run Script file. And there's a script right down here that says Pre-Compose Feature Shape Layer. I'm going to select that, 
and that will automatically pre-comp this and it actually automatically connects it and it takes care of that parent link and if I jump in here you can see what it did right here. Now there's a couple drawbacks to this particular method. If you do any edge effects, since it's cropped right to the edge, it can crop this as well if you're using this as a proper raster. So that's one thing you need to consider. Now this final method is a pretty great technique and it is using the auto trace tool inside of After Effects. So I drew out another shape layer here that is not simplified. And with this selected, I'm gonna go to layer and there's a little feature down here called auto trace. Click on this. And we have a whole dialog box here of how we can auto trace this layer. And we actually get a preview. You can see the different colors here. So what you wanna do is you wanna select alpha because if we solo this layer, let me cancel this. If we solo this layer, you can see that this is just on alpha. If I toggle alpha transparency. So we're gonna essentially trace all of the alpha edges. So we'll go back to the auto trace dialog box. So we wanna trace it by alpha. In this example, we only wanna do current frame, but you could theoretically do the entire work area if you have an animation going. And now I've set the tolerance to one, the threshold to 50, and you can play with these parameters to get the specific look that you want. And now I'm gonna click okay. And since I only did one frame, it added this as this one particular frame. So in this example, I'll need to connect this to my map comp anchor and set it to 3D. And now this is essentially a solid layer that has mask on it. And this is gonna be even more optimized just because the fact that masks are rendered much faster than shape paths. So now I'll be able to apply things like rough and edges or a turbulent displace or all kinds of different layer styles or whatever I want with this that would probably not work that well on a shape layer. Also, it's gonna be way more optimized as I move my map around in geo layers. In fact, I could go ahead and delete these shape layers if I want to make it much, much faster. But now, once again, our main caveat is the fact that if we zoom way in, we're gonna have those blurred edges. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this technique. I urge you to go give it a try and see if it works for you. It will, again, allow you to use a bunch of effects that will actually work on your layers, and it will really optimize and make your system a lot more punchy and responsive. If you want to see a fourth technique that is very specific to GeoLayers and incredibly powerful, go check out the tutorial I released last month. I'll link to this in the video description as well. Also, this again is one of the lessons from my new Battle Maps course. If you want to learn more about that, follow the link in the video description. See you next time.